Hi guys. All right, so here we go. Um, basically, we're gonna pick up where we left off. Uh, we've got Pooh Bear here, looking at basically the same thing we had at the end of class. Um, we're just trying to block it out. So right now, it's, it's kind of blocky. I want to get the, the larger forms blocked in before I start going into any real detail. All right. So detail like starting to kind of round out the hands, knock in the eyes, put it in the mouth, etc., etc., etc. All right, so let's give it a go. Um, all right, so I'm looking at my reference. Next thing I do, obviously, would probably be the legs. Um, so I'm looking here, we see the legs sort of sprout. It looks slightly towards the front, and then he's got sort of the crotch area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, um, I'm gonna make the, uh, I'm gonna make the footprint for the leg to spring, uh, sprout from. So let's do it. All right, so I'm looking at it. Here's the leg. Um, the issues I had with some of the last reference was that it was getting too kind of um, marshmallowy. The whole thing was, was had one overall sort of size, but I went to this reference, which the arms and legs are a little bit more delicate, and you have the larger forms like the, the body, the neck, the head, etc. And I think that really starts to give him his you know individual character. So I want to kind of bring that across into the model that I'm creating. It should actually be an accurate representation, although I'm not going to get this asymmetrical pose. So let's do it. Uh, so I'm looking at this, and I would also say just by looking at this, I'm guessing by looking at this that the legs are really favoring the front of the torso. So they're not really sort of in the middle. They'd be slightly favored towards the front of the character. So I'm looking at it over here, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm looking at my reference, and what I said also in the beginning was knock out the straight line. So I'm coming over here, and you see, again, straight line was here. I want to knock that out, and I just want a little bit of roundness to it. Um, and we're going to actually manipulate these a little bit more right now. Um, but I'm just starting. This is going to be the, the starting point. I like to create arcs which start from uh, one side of the form and kind of move all the way to the other side of the form. So I would see this curve right here as one flowing form and it's not perfect it's going to get pulled and pushed around a little bit before all is said and done so i'm expecting further changes to take place here all right so now what i need is i need to create again that footprint uh for the leg to sprout from i'm looking at it and i really probably needs to be here it needs to be in this pocket but as we're seeing this is just a little too small i don't think it's going to fit so i'm going to move it up and make some room this would be just sort of adjusting on the fly. I adapt to the situation that's there. I do a sweeping selection across. I'm basic, I'll press four. You can see I've selected everything across here, and I'm just gonna tug it up a little bit, something like this, enough to give me the space for the leg. See, we can see it's not getting pretty here, but this is gonna have to get fixed in a second. Um, I press five on the keyboard, so four lets me see in wireframe, five lets me see the entire character and I'm looking at it and we just kind of eyeball over here the leg is about the same size as the arm that feels like it's pretty close something like that that feels good I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do control click I hold and I left click across the back I unselect the back section now what I can do is grab these front ones and let's give it that roundness and we can see that the front one works here this one, this flow here, bam, right there. That's the problem. So I'm just gonna select that one. I unselect the front, and now I kind of bring it back, and we get that flow. Uh, realistically speaking, though, um, I'm gonna have to come back here and, and work it again, again like an egg. So it's all convex. The forms are pushing out against the surface. Um, so I don't want these kind of concave forms starting to take place. Uh, this looks okay, um, but this does not look like an egg. I want to fix that up there. All right, so he's getting that nice rounded form. I'm going to work on that a little bit more in a few minutes. Let's start to kind of get the leg into place. So I like this. Um, the next thing is I do think it's going to be favoring the front. Uh, so essentially what's going to happen is um, the leg is probably going to sprout from more of about like this area here. So let's do it. I'm going to go right click face. I select this face there. And I'm going to go extrude. I hit the extrude key. Um, and now what I'm going to do is let's tighten it up a little bit. 
So I'll go something like this. And I'd say, you know, about the size of the arm. Technically speaking, the legs should be bigger than the arm on most characters, depending what you're making. Um, there we are. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to take this loop and I'll probably make it favor the front a little bit more. So I get something that looks like this. Uh, what am I doing? I'm thinking for a second. And what I'm going to do is right click edge, grab this one, W, and let's kind of, we can kind of pull this one in a little bit here. We can see it gets a little wonky uh, over there. I'm going to kind of pull this here. And I'm trying to kind of, right here, I'm starting to kind of create an arc. I want to kind of create this convex form pushing out right now. We've got a large straight line. I like it nice and blocky in the beginning. So let's just kind of keep it that way. Uh, and I'm going to want this front foot to, this front leg to sort of sprout from the front. The kind of crotch area in here is actually quite wide, so let's not kind of push it too far. And a lot of other realistic characters would use it a little bit tighter. Um, so I'm going to kind of bring this one in a little bit like that. We start to get that kind of eggshell type shape. This is definitely needs, this is going to be scaled up a little bit because this is almost the same size as the head. This one's definitely a little bit bigger. Right click edge select the edge and let's kind of push this in here like this so now we can start to kind of the leg will be kind of coming a bit more from the front all right so now what i'm going to do right click face select that face it's just selected and i'm going to go uh extrude there's the extrude tool um, because he will be lying flat on the ground um, if i go in local mode it's going to be coming out like this. No dice. Control Z. Let's go to here so that he would be sitting kind of flat on the ground like this. And this is going to be the beginning of the leg. That should be pretty good. All right. So the leg that I'm going to make is not going to keep going in this direction. We're going to switch planes and we're going to come over to this one. It's going to start coming out this way. Um, but that does mean that this edge over here has to be dealt with. So let's do it. Right click. Um, I really think it's better to kind of clean up the mess before you go too far forward. So before I would actually start to really go on this, um, I would pause for a minute. And then I can kind of go like this. And now it's kind of creating the form that the leg will sprout from here. Uh, certainly, in, in by no way, shape, or form perfect. This has a long ways to go if I was really doing this, but it's a start. Um, okay, so we get like the little sockets for leg. Right click face. Um, I uh, left clicking to select the face. Face selected. I will extrude. So I select this. Here are the legs. Um, he's kind of a little bow legged, so. It's kind of, we can kind of have them out like this. I have to think there's a knee here somewhere. At this point, I am freestyling, uh, making it up out of my head, and I should really be probably looking at some form of reference material. Um, it feels like he's got short little, I mean, it feels like that is the suggestion of the knee. Uh, so if that was true, it means that this is going to be a little bit bigger. Right click edge. I need more reference. I'm just sort of blindly going forwards, and that's normally. And right now, if you're watching really carefully, what I was trying to do is I'm going to pull this edge up. But what happens is once it goes beyond this edge right here, um, we got problems. I shouldn't really be we're folding an edge over on top of another one. Um, not such a good idea. It would be better if, if this one is this face is always visible. We'll have um, better edge flow. Uh, all right, so I can take this one right here. We can rink, give it a little more mass. Take this one here. I'll bring this back a little bit like that, like that. Something like this. And then, uh, control Z. I'm thinking, uh, leg might come back in, and then we have his little foot facing out. Um, I'll give it a try and just see what happens. Uh, ideally, I should really be probably going back to more reference. And we can see also, I'm looking at this. This is, looks way more cylindrical. This is really boxy. But um, at this phase in the model, I want to keep it boxy. I want it not too high res. So right click face. I select this face, and I'm going to extrude. And let's see what we can do. 
like his legs are kind of coming in like this. I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, you can sort of like that. Okay, let's see what we can do. Right click, it's not pretty. Edge, select this W, put it back a little bit like that. Um, I'm going to take the whole thing, right click face, um, and I'm going to push this back in just a little bit like that. I'm going to extrude again with this, and this is where the toe will come from. The toe is pretty small in the general overall, so I'd say something like this. A tiny nudge back like that, maybe the tiniest nudge back again. Something like this, right click face, like that face, extrude. And this is supposed to be where his toe is coming from. So he's got kind of like little feet like that. And that's what he looks like over here. His toes are turned up a little bit. So we could kind of maybe go like that. Right click. Sort of like this. Let's go with it for now. So right click. Um, edge. Let's like this one. W. Uh, up a little bit. That's going to start to straighten the toe out. Grab. This one there. Okay. I want to keep them even, so like you know, I don't want to have like super favoring the other side. Uh, that looks pretty good, like this, 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 uh, that. And that's starting to look closer to what the toe should look like. Right click. Here's some obvious solutions. Well, that doesn't look right, so I come over here. I'm just going to kind of tuck this in, put this over here, and now we're getting kind of closer to what the bear's toe should look like. All right, I'm going to go with this for now. Let's say that we think it looks sort of okay. Um, and I'm always, as I move around, I'm going to constantly be making minor adjustments to the character, constantly fixing. All right, so we come in here. The toe should actually almost taper, so it shouldn't get wider it should it's kind of it was flaring at the ends right now we're gonna kind of bring it in a little bit something like that something like this there all right so that looks okay um next what should we do uh i'm looking at the legs and it just looks like the overall mass starts off is is wider and it, it tapers down so i'm seeing like the kind of where it's meeting the pelvis right here it's thicker and as it's coming down we're starting to kind of get this like um uh, triangular type shape this is starting to become like a triangle here um so what i'm going to do is let's work on it from over here i'm going to give it just a little bit more uh right click edge so like what i said before i don't want to pull this one up and overlap the other one this is bad modeling let's grab this one uh, it's going to take a little bit more work. We can kind of go up to about here. You see that it makes a tiny little bit of a problem. I start to re try to reestablish that arc here by kind of pulling it out. And then let's go into this one and use that extra space that we've made. And a little bit better. It probably even has to come up more. This is becoming a little bit... I might have to go back. So it's okay to experiment and to... Um, go in here and kind of pull and push stuff around. It's okay. I think it's a little bit better. Uh, but the thing I could do probably now to make it better is to kind of work the inside, outside edge instead of working on the inside like that so that the taper is, is just getting closer to, yeah, so it's like a little bit wider, a little bit shorter. Um, and it's real blocky. So now I'm gonna come over here and I wanna straighten this out. You see how it's at this angle here? I like to have my loops so that they kind of flow on top of the pipe so that this is sort of a 90 degree angle to the overall sort of pipe-like form here. And this is, you can see right now, most of my translations that I've been doing, I've been working from these handles, Control Z. You can also grab this sort of central box and then I can move freely in all 360 directions. Um, the problem is you just have to be more careful once I start to kind of work with this handle. So I'm going to gently, because uh, it can start going off in different directions and make like little problems. Let's work on the foot just a little bit more. Back heel, I think it's more delicate than we were actually seeing. 
and I'm going to pull this in here, something like that. That looks a little bit better from this angle. The problem is I, I must, I simply must keep moving in 360 degrees. I have to, have to, have to constantly be kind of orbiting around this. Staying in one view is like possibly going to be one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people make. Give them a little more weight to the calf. This looks pretty good. Okay, so again, looking at these arcs, they have a kind of form moving across here. Um, and then if I'm looking at this one, you see it looks all right going across here, going across here, and then it goes boom, boom, boom. Uh, so I want to go in here, grab this one, and just reestablish kind of that arc. If I can, I want to start to also space these out, these loops. If they start to get too tight together, a lot more space between this uh, edge and this edge. These are starting to get pretty tight. I want that resolution to be somewhat even. So, you know, to the best of my ability, there's not much I can really do. I want to, you know, uh, maintain that arc. All right, so let's come into here. Um, I'm looking at the foot. It's getting a little kind of crazy in this section. Uh, what am I thinking? I'm looking at the loop. I think it might actually be smaller, so I'm, I keep going back to my reference. I'm going to look in here, and I'm looking there. I'm looking here, and I'm looking here. And what I'm doing is I'm really looking here. I'm comparing this, that distance, to the overall mass this way, and the overall mass this way, vertical and horizontal. So it's just constantly kind of cross-checking, and you're checking against different shapes in the object. So I'll grab that, we can kind of pull it down. I think it's actually smaller. Something like this, maybe. Yeah, uh, this leg might be a little bit more straight, but we can see later on. All right, so let's go ahead and keep going. Um, now what I'm going to do is keep working my way up. Let's add a little more detail to the shoulder. So I look at this shoulder here, and it feels like what I'm always looking for is where is that, um, that curve, where is that arc? And it feels like mine is really shallow going across here, and then all of a sudden we get our arc. Whereas this one, the whole thing is much more of a ball. So I want to make this into more of a, a ball-like form. I can actually see a sphere right there. And in mine, I don't see any sphere. I'm looking at it from a different angle. But even so, um, in my mind, I can kind of put it together. So let's see if we can sphere this thing up. It does feel like he, the person who created this does like to sort of show off the shoulder a little bit. Um, so I'll go something like this. Um, I think the arm is actually probably a little bit tighter to the torso. So I could come into here, grab these, and just kind of tug across, down a little bit. The only issue that I have with doing this is it's going to make it more difficult to work in this area. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to leave it and see what happens. Uh, I can grab these, and then maybe in here just a little bit. It does look like his hands are on the ground. So hypothetically speaking, like that hand is using, resting his weight, his weight is on this shoulder, and uh, he's kind of leaning into the shoulder here and looking at us. But that would mean that this hand, boink, is touching the ground. Um, if we want to have this guy on the ground plane, or we want to work with the ground plane, control Z, maybe let's do that now. So what I'll do is, I can go... Uh, the issue, one of the kind of things you guys have to think about when you're working with this symmetry is if I select this one, right click object, and I move it up, look at what happens. The other one doesn't move with it. The way that we have to do this is we basically, we really have to work with the verts. We have to work with it in some form of component mode. Um, I can move this up, and then what I can do is I can, uh, I can uh, just create a new copy. So two ways of doing the same solution, but working with it in object mode, we can see is not solving the solution or come bring us a solution. So what I can do is I could one right click for vertex. I just take everything and I pull it up like this, and I want to get him so he's basically sitting on the ground, something like this. This is eyeballing it, Control Z. So that's one way of doing it. Here's another way of doing it. So I can go. Um, I can select one here, I just go delete, I take this one, I'm going to snap, this. here's the center of pivot, so same as before, I press D, I release the, the D key, so the D key is free, and I press V, and I hold, I'm holding V snap, 
uh, Alt right here. I go uh, V snap, and I'm going to V snap that to the basically one of the lowest points on the character, which is going to be the calf area. So I move the pivot here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically lock the pivot in place by pressing D again. So I press D once, I release, and we can see that now the pivot is locked in place. Control Z. I want to kind of maintain this like central axis. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold X and I'm just going to pull up and we are snapped to the grid. We can see that the calf is a little lower in the midsection, but I want that rounded form to kind of round out. So this gives me a little bit of space to kind of pull down and create that sort of C shape at the bottom. All right, so I'm going to go create polygon primitives and I'll make a plane right there. And I'm going to go R on the keyboard. Let's scale it up like that so that we can see what's going on. All right, so now we can kind of, this is going to be more useful if we have to actually kind of have uh, this character that we're creating resting on the plane. All right, so from here, uh, things that I'm thinking about, I'm looking, let's go back into the bear. Select the bear, I go to edit, duplicate special, and it will, it should um, call up my last commands that I, I was using. So I go duplicate special, L, O, L, control Z. We can see that I moved the center pivot to here. I'm going to go D, V, um, I can just snap to here. This is fine. And then I'm going to press D again, and I'm going to go edit, duplicate, special. Boom. So there's the bear over there, side to side. I'm looking at my bear over here. I'm looking at his hand over here, and what I see is it actually it feels like it's tapering quite a bit. So it's not the mass is not the same as, as what the shoulder would be. So right click, face, select this one, um, bring it way down like that. He'll sprout a little paw or a little kind of thumb-like form, uh, but not for now. Um, next, what am I going to do? I should really, this, this side of the profile, the head needs a little bit of work. Um, and what I need to do is pull up a side view of, uh, of our reference image. So let's see if we can find that. Here it is. Where's my side view? I want something with a really good profile. This is three quarter. This doesn't really count as a good side view. Um, I'm looking, I'm looking. I should probably, honestly, when I was online, I should have got a better side view, like a true side view of the crew. Uh, let's see what we can do. Um, this is a pretty good side view right there. I'm going to work on this one, so let's do it. I double click. Uh, we'll move this down just a little bit like that. And let's go over here. Here's my side view of Ku. There's the side view. Um, and what I'm seeing is the eye socket is supposed to be way more in. Right click, vertex. It's got this. This is closer to where the eye is supposed to be. And it's becoming a little ambiguous. This is the challenge of making sort of softer characters. So something like this. Okay, and uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, this is front heavy. The front of the face is, you know, it's pretty large. Um, what am I doing? Uh, the nose, maybe like a little bit more out. If we had reference in the image in the actual scene, it would be easier. But I'm just kind of eyeballing it back and forth. This is where the kind of, this is where the top of the nose is going to roll into the face. So I'd say this is like a little bit closer to here, to here, and maybe to here, something like that. And we're definitely going to need another loop in here somewhere. We're going to need another loop coming across here to pull off the bottom of the chin because that currently does not exist. All right, so if we were to try to use the insert edge loop tool here, it's not going to work. This has become an n-gon. So we've got five-sided polygon. One, if you look here, one, two, three, four, five. We need four-sided polygons to really um, to get this going. Uh, and there's an easy solution. I can actually do this now. What I would do is I would, you want to cut from this loop right here. If I cut across here, 
that becomes a quad and that becomes a quad. That's what we want. This is the little game you have to play. But basically, and then what I would do is once it's here, the loop must continue all the way around the model. And what should happen is we should get a loop going all the way around here. It's going to cut across all these quads all the way around here and then straight up and right back into it. So let's see if it works. Um, it's actually going to do sort of a spiraling type thing. Um, we'll see what happens. So here we go. The first one won't go, but the second one should go. So I'm going to go like this. I need to use my multi-cut tool. Here's the multi-cut on my shelf. Um, just to refresh you guys, I go into Mesh Tools, and there it is, multi-cut. Um, you can shift left, uh, shift control, bring it up to the shelf if you don't have it. I'm just going to click on multi-cut, and we have to basically break this. Uh, in all honesty, you probably should have done the uh, insert edge loop tool because that just made that one in, in God. Um, but that's the, the flow that's going to have to happen. So I'm going to go like this. I go insert edge loop. And you can drag one leg to about here. And I want to line it up sort of with the other one. Um, I'm going to go control Z. Let's do it again. When I'm cutting it, I'm thinking right now what I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about uh, the front kind of belly area, this section in here. And instead of favoring here, because if I do this, I'm going to have to pull the whole thing over. I want to basically cut this in half. So I'm going to take this loop and I'm going to drag it until it's about halfway in between the two. That's pretty close. I think this looks good. I release. There we go. And I'm going to go uh, multi-cut tool. So we just bridge it from here to here and then everything's good. So I go uh, multi-cut. It's one, two. I go enter, um, I'm going to go W on the keyboard, right click vertex, grab this one, and you can kind of tug this this way a little bit, and you can probably kind of even them out, but I want to kind of, I don't want to really pull on those angles that hard in the beginning. Alright, so that looks good. Um, the next thing that we can do is we can get rid of this crazy looking belly, let's round it out, so let's make these forms convex, I go control Z. Um, I check underneath, I press 4 on the keyboard just to kind of get a quick peek. I can see that the only, the only things that are selected are what I want. Forward, out, back, forward, out, something like that there. Uh, 5 on the keyboard. So it's starting to kind of, he's getting that rounded form. It's starting to look a bit nicer than it used to. Let's do the same thing here. Uh, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to take all of these. So I'm going one, two, three. The thing I need to do right now is make sure I didn't select anything on the back side of the character. Because if I start moving this around, I'm messing everything up on the back of his head. Control Z. So what you can do, the fast way to tell if you selected something on the back, is I just turn it like this, just a little bit. And if my translation tool stays locked onto the stuff in the front, it means that I've only selected the front. If I have something selected in the back, I hold shift, and we, we I do this again. So it looks the same. I can't see that something's selected back here. If I hold, if I move around a little bit, watch what happens to the translation tools. It's not locked onto the front. It's moving sort of like it's floating a little bit. So what I would do to unselect this is I just kind of move it to the side like that. I can, in my mind, I envision that this is halfway in between this selection and whatever selected back here. So I hold the control key, I left click and drag, and I go like that. And now we see that the, the translation handles pop to the front. I hold alt and I move back and forth and we see it's locked on the selection. This tells us that we've got what we want. I grab the Z axis and I tug it forward just a little bit. I watch this and I want to start to kind of create that nice arc. I can probably kind of push back on that one a little bit to accentuate that arc. And I'm starting to tug in like this. And we're trying to kind of make that eggshell-like form uh, with what we're doing. Right click edge. I can grab that one. We can pull this forward just a little bit like this. Again, rounding and rounding, making it more and more round. Um, so from the side view, we're here. Uh, what am I thinking? Right click vertex like that. I grab this one. 
I'm going to kind of pull it in just a little bit. It gets a little unclear. This area here becomes slightly more challenging, is what I would say. Uh, it does feel like the overall mass moves to the front of the nose, so I'm going to kind of, it feels like it's fairly even going across to me. So I'm going to do something like that. And we can also pull this one forwards a little bit and just like, it's all going to kind of end up at the front. And I like to kind of even them out. You saw it's getting a little tight there. All right, um, let's go back side view. I'm going to try to kind of work the chin out right now. So what I need is I see what we're looking at right now is this is kind of the muzzle or the uh, could be this section right here on the character. We need to create the lower section, which complements. It's like his his lower jaw has just been completely removed is what we're looking at right now. So to do that, we need another loop. Um, so I'm going to drop a loop across here. These should all be quads, quad, quad all the way around, so it should be smooth sailing. Let's give it a try. Insert edge loop tool. Um, I'm going to pull this up to about, let's say, like this, and this is going to be the jaw. Um, right click, vertex, W on the keyboard, grab these, like this. Oh, hello. Hello, my name's Pooh. My name's Pooh. <laughs> uh, poor attempt at limp sync. Um, but you see it. Like, there's the mouth. The mouth is in place. It's rough. It's not pretty. Uh, but it's there. So we got it. Um, it's got a little ways to go. But I think we're pretty close. I start to kind of pull it in a little bit. Not too bad. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, things that I would be concerned about. We're going to... This loop is just right here. We can see, I said it was going to kind of corkscrew. When I drop this loop here, it went all the way around and it came out up here and it's starting to work its way down. Um, I am going to use it. So what I'm always thinking is like, what's the next step? What's the next step? What, how am I going to use this? As I bring this down across here, I need to make an eye socket. And I should really be looking at a front view. His eyes are pretty far apart. Like these would actually be spread out pretty far. Like they could be much closer to the center. Um, and I think this is going to be, you know, really sort of a signify a coup. Um, so if that's the case, I could, we could go tight like this. I could favor this side, and this becomes the eye socket because this will go down one, two three, four, and it's going to actually corkscrew around again. Um, so you got to be a little careful about doing this. Um, because I don't want to deal with all that extra geometry right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically uh, use the multi-cut. Because if I use the insert edge loop, it's going to go all the way around. I want to, we will do that, we, I promise we will do that, but we're going to save it for just a minute. Um, I would almost always probably favor the inside instead of the outside. My gut says go with the inside, not the outside. Uh, where is my reference? Oh. That's annoying. The auto resize. Alright, so here we are. I got this set up. Uh, just looking at this as an overall, it's just like the top of the head is light. Feels like it needs more. It's it's a little bit more like this, so I'm going like this. Yeah, I think this is closer to what he looks like. Uh, and then what are some of the other things? This might feel in here from a side view. I'm just like looking at this overall, and this could come out here just a little like that. And this is soft. Like, so whatever is going to happen here, if we're really going to do this, we might kind of run out of time at a certain point. But if I was really going to do this thing, um, like whatever it is, the transition between these two planes here and these two planes here uh, is pretty hard. You guys talk about the mountain and the valley, and the valley is pretty extreme right now. Right now, in this one, it feels a bit softer. Uh, so, and I think his nose is kind of coming to a little bit more of a point, and it's going to really max out at this nose at the tip. All right, um, so let's do it. I'm talking about, we want to get the rest of the mouth in. 
I want to go back to the side view again, which I just opened up. There. Like this. This. And then this. That's actually sort of okay. Um, I think it's actually maybe like this. Like you can see it's actually, we're pushing on it. So sometimes when you're modeling, the idea would be you know, at a certain point, we'll be able to scan people and make photorealistic copies of stuff, which is going to be very cool. Don't get me wrong. But the other thing would be that um, what we want to do is uh, I'm just constantly adjusting. I'm just kind of I'm checking the two spaces: this space, this space, this space, this space. The overall mass might be a little bit off. Like I might have to do large scale adjustments on this thing, but. Uh, I think it's generally okay. I'm going to kind of do this, and I'm always trying to kind of, again, like even it out a little bit, is what I would say. I want to straighten out the loops. Look at this edge. This edge comes across here, comes across here, and comes here, and then it really pulls up. And I want to just have loops which kind of flow across. And again, this one is not perfect. I'm constantly like adjusting my edges a little bit. Something like that. Um, but this one right here doesn't look great. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit like that, like this. And then I have to really consider the form, um, which I'm just being a little bit light on. I'll grab those ones, this one. Something like that looks pretty good. Um, da -da 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 -da. That looks all right. Yeah, and that, that's going to be his little cheek. Um, looks better. Okay, so we're here. Um, this is the front of the Pooh Bear. Uh, his mouth is in place. I could drop a loop here to get a little bit more of the chin out. Like I would almost sort of need it. What would be nice is if I could get a loop to sort of spiral. Like I could get it to come around like this and just wrap around the face. That would be nice edge flow. Um, if I could get that, this is almost becoming like a character at this point. Normally we keep the bear a little lower res. Um, I'm looking at mine, I'm looking at the Pooh Bear. Big things, like we lose some of this kind of form on the face on my one. So let's try to kind of pull that in a little bit. Right click. I'll go to face, I'll do a selection across here, control click back on the outside one. Tug it in a little bit like this, right there, right click, vertex, something like that, like that, a little bit more. I want to kind of really feel the character. Um, the next thing is the transition. This curve right here is much sharper. This I see is pretty much as a flat plane, and then it hits that curve, and it's right here is where it's really happening. And then you have just an even curve sort of moving up. So we could just accentuate that a little bit more, maybe. Like that. So I can kind of pull in, in both directions. And I might just kind of bring it down just a little bit. Uh, something like that. All right, so there we are. Um, looks pretty good. Uh, as I said, I hate flat planes, so for this whole thing right here, this is flat, 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 and especially when you've got a loop going across it, when you've got a loop, it's your problem, you got to make it work. Um, I want to pull that one down, but I can't, I need it there. Alright, so we come back in this corner, and this is becoming like a spike, right there. so I'm just going to do it a little bit like that. There, I look at the edge, I'm going to come back and grab that one, I want to round it a little bit, like that, that's better. Uh, this right here is becoming a very sharp transition, so if I can do anything to kind of even these out, I kind of pull that loop up a little bit, and then I work the loop down the line. So i got to kind of work it in this direction, I work it in that direction. And this one, the central, this is the central line. So right here, this is the central line. I can only go up and down. I do not want to go in and out like this. This is no-no. I want to. I don't go in and out. I want to just keep everything on the origin. Control Z. That looks okay. Uh, what else do we have? Um, I'm coming around. 
Let's fix up the shoulder a little bit. So at this point in the shoulder, I see it really straightening out. Um, this is a different angle, so we are really looking at something which is a bit different than the other one, but I think this is closer. So something like this is starting to feel better. That wasn't really quite so great. Let's grab these, and as I said, the whole thing's supposed to taper. Like the whole thing should sort of, I'm gonna give it just a little in there. And let's come back and grab this bottom side of the hand so I can just work from this side, and then I work it from this side. I just kind of move, keep moving around it. Don't keep working one spot on your model. This is where problems would, a lot of times where problems will set in. Um, what I'm thinking is here, I'd like, um, let's do this. So I'm going to press 4 because I want to make sure I didn't select something I should not have. I press 4 on the keyboard to be getting close, and we can see that I did. I selected this one. This is part of the leg. I do control click across, and I'm left with just this. I press 5 on the keyboard so I really get a sense of what I'm about to do. And let's kind of pull this in. Let's pull this up. Let's pull this there. Maybe just a little bit like that. Um, I was saying that this thing's actually supposed to be touching the ground. Um, it's a long ways to go. Let's see what we can do. All right, here we are. So I go across. The thing is, the drawing might not be accurate. I'm not sure if the if it's actually. It probably is. The guy's he's Disney. He should be pretty good. Um, that's contact with the ground. That's a long little arm. Uh, the thing is, what's happening is, um, he's sort of contrapposto. He's not straight right here in this picture, which means uh, that this shoulder is lower, this shoulder is higher, and he's making his rib cage bend to this side so that he can extend a little bit further and reach the ground. If he was sitting straight, I don't think his hands would touch the ground. Uh, so I'm going to go control Z. Let's bring it back up because ours is in a um, ours is in a uh, is in the basically a symmetrical pose. Like so he's not in a T pose or anything, but he's certainly not uh, contrapposto at this point. So I'll leave it so they're a little off the ground, and then he'd have room to kind of go down and make contact with the, the ground thing. Um, so we're done with that. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, uh, and, okay, so I'm looking here, let's start to kind of even out these loops a little bit more, so what I like to do would be, or what I would push you guys to do, is I want to kind of keep the loops even whenever possible, if I'm looking at these, like, this is a massive amount of space right here, this is, like, fairly, you know, regular, and then this gets kind of tight, and this becomes sort of, like, you know, average, average a lot, a little, I want to kind of average them together. So I'm going to come into this view, sweeping selection straight down the middle, like that. There. Very careful because I know I hit a bunch of stuff that I don't want. Control click, zoom in a little bit, control click, like that. All right, so I've got it. Side view, and I can kind of, let's bring it up and sort of center it a little bit more. You can see that this back section could get definitely straightened out a bit. Something like that is better. Uh, there's be probably then what would happen is um, I can drop another loop. You can see how the toe is rounded. The next loop I would drop, like from the center here, goes all the way across, around here. It's going to go across the toe, around the back side, and then up the leg. If I do that, I'm accountable to sort of fix everything that's involved. Um, I'm going to come over here. Let's work in this section for a second. I don't think the neck kind of meets the body with quite such a crimp. I think they're, they're actually kind of closer together. So I'm going to work this out just a little bit like this, like his neck and his... His neck sort of starts where um, his uh, shoulders begin a little bit more than they are. I'm gonna pull this one up. I want to even out my edges. I want to get. I want to turn this one here into more of a quad. I want it to look more like a square. Um, it's gonna be easier to work with. Yeah, so something like that. So I'm always. You gotta just kind of be pushing and pulling on the model. Um, next thing I could do would be, 
Oh, next thing I could do would be, um, I look here, if you're looking at the interior of the eyes, the shadow is giving us tons of information. It's telling us where this plane is, uh, where the eyes and the, and the brows are going to meet. And I want to use this loop right here to define the outside of it. So I was kind of talking about it before, and I was thinking about it. The idea is it's good to kind of think about it for a little while before you kind of jump in. Um, so I'm going to do it. I'll use the multi-cut, and I'm going to just define the outside of that socket. So I see from the drawing it's going to be something like that. And then we can kind of go to here, here, here. And I'll leave it here for now. And I'll, I'll kind of close it out later on. But for now, that'll give us like a bunch to work with. So I'm going to W on the keyboard right here. We can kind of pull this forwards a little bit like that. I need to see that uh, frontal view because um, this, this or the side view, side view, side view, because uh, it's not doing me too much good. There we are. Here it is. This looks more like the cheek. This should be kind of cheek-like. Um, that should be kind of this little section here. Uh, this section right here comes out. And what's happening? the cheek is really supposed to flow sort of right into the mouth. So the mouth, which is here, is kind of going right into the cheek. And I'm looking at the eye should be about here, if I'm right. The eye should almost, it's a little bit closer in, so I think the eye is gonna. I look at this plane here, this is the brow, and then almost straight down is the eye. So on mine, it should almost be straight down to about like here, something like that. Uh, and then this is going to be the, the socket. I'll make the brow a little bit heavier. And I critical, it's critical that I move around this model. If I stay in this view, I have to keep kind of orbiting around the model to kind of see what I'm looking at. Um, this feels real blocky right here. What I really need to do is cut across. I need to do like one large sort of sweeping cut. Uh, I want my flow to be nice and even, so you can see that this is kind of, I see them sort of like ripples, is one way of describing it. Uh, like a drop of rock in the water, the ripples mirror each other. The ripple before, it looks very similar to the ripple after, to the ripple after. They're kind of mirror copies of each other as they move out. And I like to try to do that with these forms here. So you're not always going to be able to do it, but these forms should somewhat mimic if they can sort of this is the ripple and I want to see the next row sort of being ripple um, we've got two things going on here uh, which are sort of fighting against each other but it's a pretty good start so we've got something that looks like this uh, where are we going to go with it from here um, let's get the start to add some more detail I was working in the shoulder area so let's go back for a sec I come over to here, there's the shoulder, here's the shoulder. Um, I think about it for a minute. Uh, uh, I'm thinking it's looking not too, too bad. What I could do is, we need another loop. I think it's time. This is going to be the loop which cuts across here. I want to kind of all this up. I want this into more of a rounded form. And right now it's a little boxy. It looks basically like a square. Like, oh, 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 oh. I want it to look more circular. So what I need to do is I need to basically, I need to create a, a point going across here all the way around, which is going to anchor this down. And then I can take these two top ends and, and tug them towards each other, which will give it a more of a rounded feeling. So that's what I'm going to go for. Insert edge loop tool. I click, it goes all the way around. This is exactly what I'm hoping for. So as I'm pulling this up and down, what I'm doing is I want to, I'm basically looking at the point on this edge where I want to create that anchor, uh, which should be sort of about here. It's a little top heavy, so it's going to maintain that form like fairly high up. I like it. I release, I let go. This gives me a lot to work with. Um, so now I press W on the keyboard, right click, vertex, 
grab these here like this, and let's kind of pull it out here like this. Now you start to kind of get that nice little rounded form. And I really, I'd say, just kind of hold off on adding the resolution until the end. It's much, much easier to manage it. It's like you're juggling. That's what I would sort of say. And the more balls we throw up in the air, the harder it is to catch them all. So it's, I would kind of, again, stress to you, if, if, if at all possible, um, reduce the number of balls in the air at the same time. Keep it light, lightweight. Look at that. There's the back of the head. You can see this foil moves nicely, and then it just drops. That is not intentional. Um, that's something that I want to fix, and I want to just kind of, again, start to kind of create that nice arc. And it takes little bits of cleanup the whole way across. I might need that at the bottom. Uh, let's make it like this, there. Something like that. Okay, so next, let's try to ball up the arm a little bit. So I'm going to grab these ones, shift click on these ones. Be very careful making that selection because I was just doing random and I have to make sure I didn't hit anything on the other side. But I do a little test and I can see that the, the the tool is staying where it was. That's good. R on the keyboard, we can scale it in. This is going to start to give us the bald effect. Something like that. I look over here. Um, I do a control click on the interior ones. W on the exterior ones. Bring it in like that. Now we're starting to kind of get something a little bit nicer. It looks a little bit better. Uh, I don't think it's there. It's a starting point. It's definitely not finished. Uh, let me just get it out just a little bit of it like that. Kind of there. That's not too bad. Um, and then I'm looking at this, and I think the one that we're seeing is definitely more spherical. Uh, sometimes I can have this one move around a little bit. Might be okay with that. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to go one, two. It feels it's just it's not top heavy enough. Up just a little bit to get a little more roundness, and then I'm not gonna mess with it too, too, too much more. I do feel that this is a stronger sphere, so I could kind of um, try to sphere it out more. At a certain point, it's going to require more resolution. So as I said, I like these nice arcs moving across here. We can see it's kind of pulling on it right here. I've got a nice flow, nice flow, nice flow, and then. Ultimately, what happens, right-click object, uh, it gets kind of tugged out of place. So I'm going to go right-click vertex, and I'm going to um, move all these papers out of the way. And let's grab this one right here. And I'm going to kind of tug it up a little bit, and it's just I'm trying to get a nicer, even transition into here. And it just it's all going to flow a little bit better. Uh, and then the big issue is this one right here. This needs like real cleanup. This edge would be what I consider to be the real problem. Like that one right there, and then it just kind of hits this flat plane like that. Not cool. So um, another thing you're seeing is the ground plane right here is becoming a pain in the butt. I think this is losing a little. He's he's pretty big. Uh, it might be. Well, I'm gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave it. I think the hand is a little off center, so I'm always kind of double checking. Control click, I don't want that one. And I'm just going to go over this a little bit. This is where I leave the tiniest bit. I like it. Let's work this edge here. Uh, I come into here. I'm just going to just try to establish that kind of ripple, that nice kind of flowing arc. We're cleaning everything up. Like this. Something like that. Something like that. And then what I do is I want to be accurate. I hold D and I can D snap down. And I'm locking it to the next one. I'm getting them nice and straight. Uh, I'm just straighten them out. All right, so that, like, I just first, I'm just trying to kind of get from this view, the back view, this nice arc here, which is not perfect. It's it's a it's a start. Uh, something like that. 
now what I'm going to do is let's grab the whole line. You can see from this angle it doesn't look quite as pretty. It's, it doesn't feel straight. So I'm going to go like this, sweeping selection across the whole thing, and then I control click. I do a control click and I get real close to that edge. And I do control click on this side. And then I move it around and it looks like it's not too bad. I'm suspicious that something else might be selected. So I just grab it and I move the whole thing and I'm looking for problems. I don't see anything moving that's not supposed to be control Z. Let's do it. So now let's see if we can kind of I tug this one in a little bit. Is there a central edge on this down here? There's not. So I'm gonna go control Z. Basically, from this view and a side view, I want to maintain this arc, but I don't want to maintain it at this edge. I want to maintain it along the center line, like pretty much going this way. I want that to be going in this direction. What I can do, and this is again increasing the resolution, is I can drop a loop on the inside of here, and it might make a ton of geometry, because there's a chance that that loop is most likely going to cut across the arm, all the way around down it's probably going to cut on the leg and I would hope that it cuts around this way and under the butt if it cuts this way and down the leg like this that's more of a it's me adding tons of geometry every time you add to it you're accountable um, and we can see here that I did what I was hoping not to do which would be to uh, pull this one out what I really think needs to happen is we need to kind of break the direction like this little edge here should actually branch off and go down the center of the leg so I delete that edge and then this one here should actually come up and go in that direction so uh, that isn't too pretty either uh, I'm breaking the rule that we said not to so let's do it let's add that extra loop um, so to add the extra loop I use the insert edge loop tool so I go insert edge loop tool there. Insert edge loop is selected and this is just to preserve the arc in the center of the bear. So I'm going to go like this. I can't see where it's going to end up and it does. It goes under the butt and this is the one. It's confusing but I'm looking at the edge which is closest to my mouse right here. So I'm going to just move it to where I think it needs to be which should be right about here. I don't worry about anything else. I cross my fingers and I hope and I go, I release, and there we go. We've got a nice, this is great. This is actually a good one because I can use that on the head and we can get that little paw out, which will be nice. And I can start to round out the arm. The arm still feels basically like a box. This just became the mountain and this is becoming sort of a midway section. So we can use it to sort of even between the two. So let's do it. So I go W on the keyboard. Um, and now we can uh, right click edge. I'm going to come back and go after it like you know, what I was doing in the beginning in a set. I'm going to grab from the center and I try to get it to an angle that's closer to where I want to be. And that's good. It's definitely favoring. That's it's not cool. It should be really on the right click vertex. Grab the whole thing. And then I can find the angle that's going to work. Something like that. Like this is, I see it tapering. It's like it's on a taper. Uh, yeah, I see this tapering too. I think that just a, I think it's coming from both sides. So just a little on the top. I see I'm making a selection. I line them up. I can see their three verts. I try to move it so that they're all on top of each other and they just do the tiniest selection. This removes the possibility of error or uh, damage by user. So that feels okay. I come back, I check the bear, and I think the roundness, we could almost, if we're lucky, get it from here. Instead of having to pull both of these in, I could pull this one out. That's what I'm hoping. Let's see what it looks like. So I go like this, sweeping selection across the whole thing. I move around, look at this, see the cursor is not on top of this, and I'm suspicious that, yes, something there is selected, something there is selected. So I go control click, you see that this moves, control click. It moves again. I'm going to press 4 just to check. Yeah. Uh, it looks okay. It looks okay. So I'm just worried that something else was selected on the inside. I just want to make sure the selection is along the outside. I press 5 on the keyboard. And let's kind of give this the gentlest tug like this. There's some of that roundness I was hoping for. 
Uh, I'm gonna go like this. Grab these. It would be kind of wooden, and this starts to accentuate the shoulder. It feels like it's a little bit heavier than it once was. Uh, the paw. Let's kind of bring this down just a little bit. And I do think we could even get more out of this. We'll do one, two. R on the keyboard. We can just tug it a little bit. All right, I like it. Um, I come back over here, I look at the mouth. This loop right here coming down at this crazy angle, no dice, no good. Um, I just go into here, let's fix it. I give it the tug, I can see the translation handle. Control click, sweeping selection, watch the handle, release, it moves to the selection I want. And I wanna straighten this out so that it's really kind of coming in like that's what Pooh Bear's mouth looks like. Closer, much, 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 much closer to what I want. Um, I'm worried about a little bit of some of the stuff in there, but overall it's not too bad. Let's I'll select that one, V snap down to this one, straighten it out just a little bit, grab this one, uh, V snap down to this one. we got to watch these straight lines, um, but the first one was annoying me a little bit. I see the neck and, the, and the, the torso sort of becoming one in this iteration. Let's grab this one right here, and we can kind of use this little tug into just to kind of uh, support this form that's here. I want to support that this form of the mouth. That's pretty good. Uh, overall, it's not too bad. That's kind of looking like Pooh Bear. So we went through all this effort to kind of drop this loop and make this thing kind of go around. The arms are definitely not round. Um, to get them round, I'm probably going to need another loop going around here. Um, we could almost call this model close to finished uh, for a beginning model. I do a control click across here, and I get that loop that I wanted to fix up right there. So I'm going to take this one, and I put in like this. Now he's starting to get around. Uh, and then we maintain that curve in the center, which is what I really wanted. Um, so I get that one in, and then I'm going to pull it in this way to give us even more roundness. You can see it's getting kind of messed up in this area, but that's okay. I look at the, the greater the greater uh, influence that it's having. We can see that this area here is getting torn up, like this needs reworking. All right, so I come back over here, I grab this one, and that, that. I'm going to have this flow into the neck a little. I'm always adjusting from all different angles. Um, this right here, again, that is a problem. Like this is something I want to fix, but we'll come back to that later. Uh, it's just in the back of my mind. And then over here, look at this. Boom. Bam. Bam. So like this needs to get, he's a round bear. So I'll be more rounded. Look at this one. A little bit like that. Again, I think about arcs. I look at this and I look at it as an arc moving all the way across it. I see something wrong with it. I want to come back in there and fix it up a little bit, a little bit there, uh, that's not bad, something like that. And then the next is we look at here and we just see that this is a flat plane, 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 flat plane. Flat plane. That's no good. So let's start to use this. This loop is actually becoming very useful. And we can use this to start rounding out our character. We grab these central ones right here. We can pull these in a little bit, just a little bit, something like that. And I'm getting some more roundness out of the character. Uh, let's do this one, and I'm breaking up those flat planes. And then this one right here, we can just bring. I hate the flat planes are no good though. And then the one that the killer, same as the lower section, we gotta get this one right here. Gotta grab that one. Just gonna move that a little in right there. So 
I was getting that roundness. We can get this loop right here. Uh, we get this loop like that. Control click all the way across and just to fold it out like that. I can get this one. Get like that. This one here. I can break up that roundness. Or break up that box. I don't want it looking like a box. This is still looking pretty, pretty darn flat. There, like that. And just anything to get rid of those flat planes. Or not anything, but. Alright. Arms to me, when I'm looking at it now, feel a little small. It does feel like the arms could come up a little bit on the bear. Uh, and then possibly the feet too. So right click, let's grab these two. Control click across the back. I need more resolution, which is basically another edge loop. It's another word for I need another edge loop. I said I think the mask and the arms needs to come up a little bit so we could right click face I could just do a face selection like that so all this control click that control click this and right on the arms so then just to test to make sure I haven't selected stuff I don't want around nothing control Z let's go R on the keyboard before W on the keyboard. And then leave the R on the keyboard down just a little bit like that. Down just a little bit like that. I think it's better. Um all right, so right click vertex, let's round out the bottom section, W, and let's kind of make that egg shelly. I'm just looking at where it's penetrating the ground, grab these one, and then just kind of support that form. That. I'm going to take this lower loop, you see it's being pulled up just a little bit, and I'm going to do it across like that, and I'm going to pull it down like that, control Z, because I hit a whole bunch of stuff I don't want. objects like this right click vertex and then control click control click control click it's getting close we're starting to kind of pull on this a little hard here and it's yeah again as I said not really good to kind of overextend some of this stuff it would really be better, probably. I don't want to. You don't want to kind of pull on it too hard. Is basically what it comes down to. What I might be able to do is, um, what I'm thinking about doing is, I can take this edge right here, split cut, split cut, split cut down to here, and that would make it much nicer. It would make a much nicer transition. Uh, multi cut one. Something like this, because this one's actually inside, like that. And now I can go to this one. Am I? I press delete to get rid of ones I don't want. And what I want to do is I want to catch that vert. Um, delete. Let me look at this. So I just change angles, and here we go. That's what I wanted. I go enter. And now I'm going to go, we have a triangle there. Um, I can work that out, but it would take a little bit of effort. 
I've got that one. Something like that looks a little bit better. Um, it's going to be sort of a nicer transition between the two. I look for what I would call sort of like um, knives or just really sharp angles. Look at this right here. This is becoming a really kind of sharp triangle right here. And we want to try to anything we can do to knock that stuff out. We don't want to kind of pull or push on it too, too hard. Um, and I could actually start to use this to give it a little more roundness. Just a little bit more roundness. I'm going to be sort of careful how we use it, but that's okay. And then, like, his foot just looks completely screwed up. I could even kind of tug in this one to give it that kind of a little bit more of that roundness in the form. I look at this one here, maybe just a tiniest bit more out. I start to go to this one here, and this is what I would call bulldozing at this point. So what we have is we've got a loop, a main loop right here coming across the center of the model, and it's pulling into the center to kind of get that, that mouth out. I'm going to bulldoze, right click edge, select this one, and just delete it. And then I'm going to multi-cut like this. I'm going to go one, two, three, and then hit enter like that. This will be another loop coming back down, but for now, uh, that looks fine. That looks pretty good. Okay, um, I keep looking at the shoulders. The shoulders would really need a little bit more work. Um, for now, let's finish this bear off because this is, you know, a one class exercise. It doesn't have to be like, you know, super, super, super amazing. Um, I'm seeing answers to the solutions. I can drop an edge loop across here. It'll come around here. It'll go up, do the toe so I can get that nice rounded toe. And then it'll come across the leg, but it's, you know, come back across here. It's a little, it's adding a chunk of geometry to the overall model. All right, so let's keep doing it. Um, you can see that also the arm is pushing in. You can see right here, this is colliding through this geometry over here. So W, right click, vertex, grab this one, take it out just a little bit, like a little bit there. Something like that. Um, let's finish up the face. So here we go. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. His brow's much higher, so I'm looking like this. This sort of shadow area is much more significant on him than it is on my one. So I'm going to kind of try to mimic that. Kind of like this, and sort of push to the edge. And that's going to be the shadow area. Um, ooh, yeah, so like for my reference, it does look like uh, that the brow's a little bit lower. Yeah, it's definitely lower. Um, I guess it just looks different from the other angle. Let's round this out. See, flat edges don't like them. Just a little bit of roundness. A little bit of roundness. And I'm just trying to straighten that out. I'm looking at the overall arc. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's get the eyes in. Um, come across right there. Now what I do is I select right click face, select the eye socket. I'm going to extrude. I um, grab the central selection. So to do that, I basically, you saw that there was just a box here before. There was a little square. Um, I want to bring up the scale on that. And to scale it, it wasn't there originally. To activate the central scale handle, I have to click on this outside scale handle. Then this one will appear. So I've done that, and I scale it down, and I put the eye. And his are kind of, they feel a little longer, sort of like that. 
maybe a little more. They're kind of like oval, something like that. And they're definitely smaller. But it's going to be something like that. Now I move it into place. They're definitely towards the outside of the socket, which is about here. And that's back, let's back up just a little bit and take a look. Is that right? Get a little bit lower. I'm kind of pushing it really hard right now. Something like that. Okay, I think I'm going to go with that. Uh, we might need some re-looping because um, if I'm looking at what I've just done, this one right here isn't great. I don't like making these sort of like in long, sharp angles um, or areas where problems many times will set in. Right click vertex, I select this one, W across, down. I'm going to sort of straighten it out a little bit. This is going to be the eye socket. So this is where the eye will uh, be. Kind of like this. Again, these are ovals. So I'm going for something like that. Um, all right. So once that's been done, I'm going to go right click, face, select the face, delete. Um, and then I'll go create polygon primitives and I'll make a sphere. I'm going to go W, F to frame the sphere. Uh, let's move the sphere up, over. So look at Pooh Bear. Um, if I'm looking at him, he's kind of low, like low resolution. Um, this is kind of high because it's going to fit inside of that little socket right there. This is significantly higher resolution geometry. Right click. I want to move it into object mode so it's green. Come over here. I open up the channels layers. So top right corner, channels layers box. Um, I have to have the object selected. It's selected. And I can come in here. And I can select, I just, just show you what I'm doing. I had to actually, is it there? You can't get it anymore. But um, I had to drag down to get to this input place. I could not see it, so I had to move mouse over here and drag it down to actually activate that. I mouse over the polysphere. We see that here we get um, basically its construction history. We get subdivisions axis, subdivisions height, 2020. I can just select both of them and I can middle mouse in the scene and just bring it down a little bit. Like that looks better. Like this, I'm thinking subdivisions along the height, we need less so, so something like this, just to kind of keep the resolution sort of even on the character. This is certainly higher resolution than the bear once it's been scaled, but uh, just it was a little crazy before. I go E on the keyboard, um, and what I want to do for an eye is you always want to have the kind of the cap facing the user. You do not, control Z, want to use the side view of the of the sphere. This is always going to be higher resolution. It's getting more dense. You're getting uh, more geometry in the same amount of space than we are in a side view. So to do this the right way, I open up the channels layer. Uh, we can see we've got the object selected. It's 87.114. Let's make this a solid 90 degrees. Boom. Looks good. And I'm going to go R. Let's scale it down a little bit so they're looking more Pooh-like. Uh, and then let's flatten it out a little bit and scale it down. And I'm going to go W. I'm going to go F. And something like that. I'm going to go R. Go W out to the front. Something like that. That's kind of close. Uh, we would have to R, maybe make it a little bit more shallow. W something like this. And what would happen at this point is that the, this geometry really needs to work around, work with the eye. So I've got to kind of stay true to my reference, but at the same time, uh, it's got to work around the eye that's there. So I go, keep going, 
um, right here. Right click vertex, right click vertex, like this one. I can kind of nudge this one across here a little bit. I can go down like this one here a little bit, a little bit like that, like that. We need more geometry, is basically what we do. I need to drop more loops. Um, and what I'm trying to do is I want to get this one around to kind of start pulling out that crazy angle and maybe down here a little bit. So I'm trying to soften up like these forms if I can. If I can't, it means I've got to add more loops. And I want to do it as carefully as possible. All right, so we've got the eye in place. I'm going to make it black so that we can see it a little more clearly. Uh, so we want to open up what's known as the hyper shape, which we will spend more time doing uh, most definitely throughout the rest of the semester. So to do that, I'm going to go to all windows. I go down to rendering editors, and I'm going to go across to hyper shade. There's the hyper shade. I'm going to come down to let's make some materials. I'm going to make let's work with Lambert's in the beginning. So I'm going to go here. This is the Lambert. By clicking on it, I generate a new one. You can see that it's there's an old one. Now there's a new one. Uh, you want to make new ones. Don't mess with the original Lambert. It's not good. I'm going to make two new ones. Um, first one, I just double click on it. And then we see over here a mini attribute editor inside of the hyper shade. And it's showing the attributes of this Lambert. I'm going to go to color, double click. I'm going to make it black. So I just pull it all the way up. And that's good. You can see that's done. Pick up just the color picker. You guys should be able to handle this. Uh oh, no dice. Double click, color picker. I just make it black. And I go done. All right, so I didn't hit done uh, at the end. The next one, I'm going to go here, and let's do the color picker, and let's make it yellow. Let's give us a Pooh Bear yellow. Um, da -da 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 -da. We're closer. I'm going to give it just a little bit of red, something like that, so he's maybe a little less red. I think that's okay. So let's click that. I'm going to go done. So you got yellow and black. And I'm going to, one, I can go like this. I can middle mouse click and drag from the hyper shade onto the object I want. I release, and he's yellow. I release, he's yellow. I take the black one here. I release, it's black. There we go. So it's starting to look more like poo. Um, I think it's a little yellow. I think it could be a little more red. So I'm going to reopen the hyper shade, uh, uh, double click, go here, and I can watch it update as I'm messing with it. Select color picker, color picker, and just a little more red. Yes, I think that's right there. Looks good. I like that. So you've got that. Uh, let's get the eye across. So I take the eye that I made, right click object, like that. And I'm going to go uh, sort of in a top down like view. I'm going to go D to release the pivot. I'm going to go X to snap to the grid. And I'm going to just snap across. You can see that it's hitting the origin. It's automatically slapping. And uh, the pivot is in alignment with the center line of the character, so that's what I want. I press D again. Now I go to Edit Duplicate Special. I don't have to do anything because the old setting should be in place. Drink. You can see the eye goes to where it's supposed to. Uh, and then what we would do is I could actually drop another loop. I don't want to drop too many more loops, but the one that I would drop next would be on the center of the eye, and I could start to round out this eye socket, basically. Uh, the eye socket needs more resolution. Right click, vertex, grab this one. Right, 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 right. Something like that. Not too bad. Alright, so next we need to make his nose. Um, 
there's a bunch of different ways we could do it. I could actually pull it out of this surface here. Or I could just duplicate this and put a route nose on the top. Uh, I'll just take the easy way. Um, just because this model could go on forever. Grab this, control D, pull it out like that. I'm going to blah, 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 blah. Uh, I can modify. I want to put this pen, the pivot back to the center of the nose. It's off over here, so I go to modify, and I go down to center pivot. I'm going to go R on the keyboard All right, until we get something that's looking closer to the nose we're going for. I'm going to go W, V snap. Like that. There's the nose. The thing is, the nose on his is really at the top, it's not down there, so the nose is going to be kind of like that. That would be my guess. Um, uh, let's look at the side view for a sec. Okay, so I'm going to go R, let's scale it up just a little bit. All right, here, right click vertex, select this one, W. We could kind of like bring it out like this. We could get this one here. This is going to go kind of probably more like that. Uh, Now you kind of once I pull these cheeks out, he starts to feel a little more bear-like. Uh, uh, I'm hitting an issue with Maya right now. I had a little glitch right there where I was kind of trapped in a tool, and it would not let me out. So there's kind of more of a front view. Um, I could go back and remodel this to really kind of fit the, the actual bare nose. Right click, vertex, W. These have to come up. W, W, wrong W. These almost have to sort of intersect there. something like that. I can see maybe the eyes could come out a little bit more. Right click object. A little bit like that. Um, the other one did not update so I'm going to have to delete that. Take this one and then edit duplicate special. I could grab the verts and that would have been better. Let's make the ears. So I'd say the ears are going to start basically somewhere in here, probably here, in the front view. So right click face, select that face. I'm going to go to extrude. Uh, I'll go back to world mode. Let's kind of punch it up, punch it up. W and across, I'd say it's further back, so it's definitely favoring the back side. And then let's see if we can straighten this out. Right click edge, W. Right click vertex, grab this one. Okay, and this is a little wonky in here, so this is all going to have to, I would say, in my opinion, it's going to need to be reworked. That's going to be the footprint for the air. Right click face, select the ear. 
and extrude it out. Oh, he's got ears. Um, uh, let's go back to the front view and see what we got. So here we are. Here are the ears. All right. I would go. It's definitely favoring an upward type movement. Something like that. There, there. I'm trying to grab that the translation handle is just not going. Uh, which is ultra freaking annoying. I get it from this angle. Something like that. Extrude one more, and I'll just give myself enough geometry to finish. And that should be the top of the ear, something like that. And it's all sort of favored towards the middle. Alright, so this would need a little bit of cleanup right back vertex. Um, w. Something like that looks okay. I'm gonna go with it. There. And we cut out the mouth to get something like a little bit closer. But that's sort of close to what he looks like. We could build out a shirt and whatnot, and that's gonna be another project. Uh, but there we have it. So that's gonna be our kind of a close to low res Pooh Bear uh, for this exercise. We could definitely, you know, work out the stomach a little bit more. Uh, I would probably, I don't like that. And I'm just scared, so I do a control click. See, that's better. Yeah. So there's poo. So you're trying.